Okay, let's just do a sound check. Everything sound all right? I hear you. Okay, and no feedback. Good. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We're gonna wait just one more minute to make sure we get everybody in the room. Thanks. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone so much for joining us uh, for this month's member webinar. We are so excited to be with Amy Conrick and Andrew Carpenter, uh, both CTA staff that are directors of these two TA centers. Um, so with that, just thank you so much. If you guys have any questions regarding Zoom or any technical assistance, please feel free to put that in the chat box. Otherwise, all questions should go in the Q&A and we'll be monitoring that throughout, but we'll save all questions for the end. Um, yep, so with that, I will kick it over to Amy and Andrew. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Taylor. Um, good afternoon, everybody, to all our CTA members who are on. It's um, Thank you for joining us. Um, I am Amy Conrick, and I'm here with my colleague, Andrew Carpenter. Hello, everyone. Still forget to unmute. Okay. Um, so I've been at CTAA, many of you probably know me, for over 15 years now. I started as a member of the JobLinks Employment Transportation Center, um, where we worked on job access issues for up until about 2012. And then in 2013, I moved over to the National Center for Mobility Management, and I'm now the director of that center. Um, in all those years, I've developed experience not only in employment-related transportation, but also in healthcare transportation, NEMT, um, clearly mobility management, um, human-centered design, and cross-sector work. And for those of you who don't know me, um, I have a master's degree in Old English poetry uh, with a minor in Old Irish poetry, so very helpful for the transit systems and a very strong connection to Ireland, including being married to an Irishman from Cork City. What about you, Andrew? <laughs> um, so I've been at CTA for four years and a little bit. Um, Amy took me under her wing uh, in 2017, just after the Detroit Expo. And um, so I started the Monday after and everyone looked like zombies, but they have since livened up again. Um, and so, so I started with NCMM and I've learned a lot about human-centered design and um, these various forms of um, collaborating with community members to uh, focus on outcomes-based projects and planning and making sure that um, uh, everyone that is affected by an effort is included in it uh, from the start. And so, um, so I've learned a lot uh, from Amy and then um, I, helped with uh, Cheryl Rose Glacier, my predecessor as the director of NCAT to, to launch NCAT in late 2019. We got one trip into Minnesota before uh, the pandemic, but um, so we got one in. And so um, we just finished our um, first work trip again to uh, Missoula, Montana last week. And so we're back. And, um, and so I took over as director of NCAT in um, September of last year. And I, at the same exact time, started getting my master's in sustainable transportation at the University of Washington State, not DC. Um, and so I come from writing about transit technology, uh, mostly from larger cities. So I've been, I've had a lot of interest for a while in how to scale this down and spread it out to other communities and showing where it's effective and where it works and um, you know how to think through the different tools that are available and how they can help. Great, okay. And thank you again, everybody for joining us. Um, so today, Andrew and I'd like to share information on what our two technical assistance centers or TA centers as we call them, what we've been up to over the last six months or so, um, and how, it, more importantly, our work can translate into benefits for CTAA and its members. Um, Andrew would describe his work first, 
Before he does, um, I'd like to also mention that in addition to Andrews and my TA center, well, we call them our TA centers, but they're not really ours. Um, CTAA also operates one additional TA center. Um, this one's funded through the Administration on Community Living under the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's called Transit Planning for All. And I'm sure you will hear about that um, later in this webinar series for members. Um, that center focuses on ensuring that older adults and people with disabilities um, are included in the planning transportation in their community. So with that um, introduction, Andrew, start us off. Did it again, thank you. And so, um, so again, I work on the National Center for Applied Transit Technology, and we are um, a small but mighty team. And so there's myself, Marcel Moreno, who just started this past December, uh, right after Christmas. Um, she is our transit technologist, and she came over from the city of Asheville in North Carolina. And then Charlie Rutkowski um, and his hat help us out on our innovative technology strike teams. We just had our first two meetings this morning uh, with those strike teams, so we're super excited to get those started. I'll tell you more about them in a little bit. Uh, Chris Zeilinger, who uh, many of you may also have worked with recently, uh, he also helps us out from time to time. And so a little bit about why uh, NCAT exists. Um, so we are a cooperative agreement funded by FTA, the Federal Transit Administration, and we focus on working with small urban, rural, and tribal transit agencies to help with navigating all of the technology that's out there. So the that ever evolving and changing landscape with um, uh, buzzwords such as disruption and innovation um, and uh, data, all of that we help to kind of distill and understand what the actual tools are for um, working through how those tools can apply to your transit agencies and how how you can go about applying those tools. And so one of our big goals, and we talked about this a lot in the beginning days of NCAT, uh, was how exactly we want to go about this. And so we landed on this idea of technology transfer. And so the idea is for us to provide a lot of the capacity that a smaller agency might not have on technology expertise, either through our expertise or bringing on other experts wherever possible and helping uh, whoever comes to us to understand uh, what they are trying to understand basically. And so we have kind of two tracks of what we do. The, the, we have our intensive technical assistance and uh, within the TA, we have our hands-on workshops. And so we work, uh, we've had four virtually, and then last week in Montana, uh, in Missoula was our first in-person workshop, which was very exciting. And so the idea is uh, to uh, work on skill building for small agencies. And so we've held two each of a data and a digital tools to facilitate re system redesigns workshops. We held them in March and in June. And so we're going to hold a data workshop again uh, at CTA's Expo in November in Richmond. And then we're also working on when to put the redesign workshop together. And then last week, we also held a workshop on the considerations that transit agencies need to sort out before they pursue implementing battery electric buses. And so Marcella actually put together a great workbook that we're going to put on the website soon. And so um, make sure to keep an eye out on our website really at all times. You can see the URL at the bottom, n-catt.org. And the idea is we are constantly updating that website um, with materials from our workshop. So even if you don't get to go to the workshop, you can still use some of the tools we develop. And so we'll put that workbook up there. And this is all meant to be living documents. So if you have any thoughts about the workbook or um, what workshops you would like to see, let us know. I'll have my contact information at the end of this uh, presentation as well. And so the workshops, we keep them small-ish, uh, particularly when they're virtual. And the idea is so that way a lot of people, or so that way attendees can have a a uh, close experience and speak with us and um, our facilitators and 
communicate their needs and their questions, what they really want to figure out. And then the facilitators can actually directly address those needs in a lot of ways. And so we uh, keep our virtual events at about 15 because particularly online that can, it can be hard to navigate a whole bunch of people um, when it's just a bunch of rotating tiles. At Expo, we're going to experiment with going up to 50. So um, we'll see, there will be a link for where to find that registration later in my slides as well. And so, um, so those are what we've had so far. We have more in the works. And then we also, as I mentioned um, a few minutes ago, have our innovative technology strike teams. And the idea behind these is that technology transfer philosophy. And so we're working with five transit agencies this year, St. Mary's Transit in um, Maryland, in St. Mary's County, Maryland, Community Connector in Bangor, Maine, um, Kauai County Bus in Kauai County, Hawaii, uh, East Central in Iowa uh, Council of Governments in Iowa, that's around Cedar Rapids, and the city of Asheville in North Carolina. And so there's a whole range of what we're working on this year from um, uh, specifications for electronic fare payment technologies and how to, how to pursue them, the different implementation plans for them, uh, implementation plans for onboard technology, such as automated vehicle location and automated passenger counting. And then also, you know, it can even be the basics of kind of where to start and how to prioritize and how to think through the process of going from where you are and then uh, getting to where you want to be and laying out that plan. And so, uh, so there's that. Last year, we worked with uh, four agencies. We did it all virtually because of COVID. So um, as much as we love being able to visit, and that definitely adds a strong element um, to, uh, to the work, we are able to do this all virtually. And so we worked with um, Allegheny County in New York, um, Redwood Coast Transit Authority in um, California, Bloomington Transit in Bloomington, Indiana, um, and Fountain in South Carolina. And, and also, I'm sorry, it was five also, and, and the Bay Area Rural Transit um, in Ashland, Wisconsin. So not, not Bay Area BART, um, or not San Francisco Area BART, but in um, upstate Wisconsin. And so, um, you know, the results from last year, actual battery electric bus implementation plans, um, and then, RFPs for technology implementation. So these strike teams result in real concrete outcomes and uh, help get agencies many steps along in their tech procurement processes so that they can, in a lot of ways that they could not have done um, without that outside help. Um, but with, you know, uh, consultants are expensive. And so we hoped we are here to bridge that gap. And so it's at no cost to the um, technical assistance recipients. And so, um, so we work directly with them so that way we can help as many folks as possible. And we also have our state technology summits and uh, the application for this year's opened 15 minutes ago. And so I'll have that link in a, just a couple of slides as well. And so we co-host these with state departments of transportation. And the idea behind these is to work with the DOTs on collaborating with uh, local transit agencies on technology priorities. And so this is for prioritization at the state level and creating roadmaps for uh, statewide technology. So last year we worked with Mississippi, Minnesota, um, New Mexico, and Maine. So we're looking for a different part of the alphabet this year. And, um, you know, the, there's a lot of flexibility. We co-create the, um, meeting with or the summit with the DOTs and then that is to help the DOTs co-create kind of their plans with the local transit agencies and so last year a lot of the DOTs identified the need for statewide uh, GTFS one of the many acronyms from uh, from the tech world the general transit feed specification so that way uh, passengers can uh, read uh, transit schedules online and see much more easily see the maps of where their uh, transit options are. And so a lot of the states identified the need for 
um, pushing that out at a state level and working with the localities on doing so. So that's just one example of what can come out of that. And, um, and so we would also did those virtually. We would like to do them in person, but we're aware that with the new Delta variant um, that may or may not happen. So uh, again, we'll co-create that with the uh, DOTs who we end up selecting. And so, uh, so that's our technical assistance wing of ourselves. And then we also have our tech university. And so this is your traditional resources um, on adopting emerging technologies. So you have white papers and guidebooks. Uh, these are meant to be real tools that you can kind of sit through you, either if you're a beginner or a little bit more advanced on each of these topics. And so you can use these to better understand what you're hoping to accomplish in within that topic. And so it provides case studies promising practices and, um, and in a lot of cases, worksheets for you to go through and think through um, the questions you need to think through uh, before going down any of these paths. We also do webinars, as you can see, uh, but we have a lot of webinars on our Tech University page. We just held a, uh, one at the end of July on microtransit, uh, when and where it makes sense. And so the idea is that um, microtransit is very exciting technology, but it is a tool and it's not always the right tool. And so we talk through kind of how two different agencies right next to each other thought through the process and came out with different versions, but it worked for them. And so at the end of September, um, I have not created the event yet, but uh, keep an eye out soon. Uh, at the end of September, we're going to have another micro transit episode or um, episode on, um, uh the flavors of microtransit and so the idea is to talk about the different service models that you can get out of a microtransit system and so uh, that's one of the many topics we cover we've also gone through zero emission vehicles green infrastructure data um, and software decision making so you can find that on our webinars we also do podcasts and uh, video profiles and so these are to uh, spotlight the efforts of your peers. And the idea is that there's a lot of great stuff happening around the country. And so we want to make sure people are aware of it and how, um, how people can find it. And so uh, our first video is up on our website, as well as our podcasts. Um, we're on season two now. And um, we have a lot of great stuff coming up. <clears throat> and the idea is to um, help everyone build on the existing knowledge and the wisdom of the crowd. So that way we don't have everyone relearning everything that's been learned somewhere else. And so, um, so this way you can start a couple of steps ahead, a couple of steps ahead if people have already done so. And so here's just kind of a snapshot of what our website looks like. It's very colorful. Uh, and so um, you can see our guidebooks what our podcast page looks like, and then the home page, which has our Tech University. It shows all of our upcoming events, as well as the upcoming events of the other technical assistance centers, such as NCMM, the National uh, Aging and Disability Transportation Center, RTAP, and the Shared Use Mobility Center. <clears throat> we all collaborate uh, very closely, and so um, you can see their events coming up. And our news section is our opportunities that we have um, internally and with the other TA centers as well. And so um, for the guidebooks in particular, we are currently in the background working on um, uh, updating them. So that way the format is a lot like on the transportation planning for all website. And so it'll be much more interactive and embedded on the actual web page instead of a PDF to download. So we're very excited about that and that should be launched soon. <clears throat> and so a couple of other items about Tech University is we have our procurement playbook. <clears throat> and so the idea behind this is a lot of folks have asked us for templates on how to procure different technologies. And so since everyone has a very unique situation, uh, we don't think templates are the best option, but what we're starting to do is collect um, sample documents of successful procurements. So either RFPs, implementation plans, um, anything like that. And we have, we're starting to build an archive and then we will launch that soon. 
So if you have um, successfully procured a new transit technology and you think that your documentation would be helpful for other people in this industry, please let us know. And we would love to be able to feature that. We can anonymize things as we need to, so that way you know, no trade secrets are out or anything like that. Um, but we wanna make it as useful as possible to everyone. And that way, again, we can build on the collective wisdom of the whole industry. And uh, so we would like to hear from you if you have any of those. <clears throat> we also have our technology summit in a box. Um, we can't have all of the tech summits every year um, as much as we would like to. So we also, after last year, created a general template for a technology summit, summit for folks to use. Um, and this can be states, individual agencies, uh, groups of agencies, or even advocates. And so the idea here is that uh, you can, this creates a space for people to talk about the technology that they are interested in <clears throat> and uh, begin to collaborate with each other on it. And so this is, again, that idea of creating that collaborative environment for um, more, a more organic implementation of new technologies. So you can check that out in our Tech University website as well. <clears throat> Most importantly, we have our opportunities. Again, as I mentioned, our state summit applications opened today. And so applications are due on September 24th. And that's the URL for finding these. Uh, you'll also be able to see the URL for this on our uh, on CTAA's and NCAT's Twitter feeds. Um, and so we encourage you to follow those. And also our newsletter is going to go out on Monday or Tuesday. You can sign up for our newsletter at the NCAT website as well. And that will have the link to the State Summit RFA. It's also just on the website, so you can go there as well. <clears throat> and so um, if anyone has questions, we'll post answers to questions on that same page as they come in. We're also going to have our data workshop in X in Richmond, as I mentioned, on November 9th. Um, and that's going to be an all day workshop. And that's the um, the expo homepage. And then you can reach registration from there. And then also Marcella, our transit technologist, is working on an open source GIS skills for small agencies. And so this is so folks can learn how to do some basic mapping uh, for their own uh, projects without having to go to the local GIS department and um, you know, being able to grapple with other things more immediately. And so, uh, so with that, reach out to us, please. We want to hear from you about anything and everything. And so uh, my email is there, carpenter at ctaa.org. Marcella's email is also there, moreno at ctaa.org. What should we cover that we haven't covered? What format of resources should we have that we haven't done yet? Um, and then just in general, what, what do you need help with and how can we help you? So, um, so with that, I am going to hand it over to Amy to um, talk about NCMM. Great, thank you, Andrew. Just give me a second to get my slides up here. Okay, those look all right? Looks great. Okay, great. Animation. <laughs> so you can tell our couple colors purple. Um, so what I want to kind of go over is kind of like what's been happening and what's coming up. Similar to what Andrew's done. Um, I definitely encourage you to go his the website. It sounds like they have some fantastic resources there. Uh, so first, um, NCMM, um, like NCAT, um, is a technical assistance center funded by the FTA. Um, it's led by CTA and our partners in crime are Easter Seals and APTA. Our mission is to promote customer-centered mobility strategies to advance good health, economic vitality, self-sufficiency, and community. And I think right there you can tell that we do a lot of our work is involved about coordination and also in cross-sector work. So a lot of people ask, what is mobility management? And there are several definitions floating out there, but for our definition in short, um, it's um, the practice of creating and managing mobility options at both the systemic and system to customer levels to improve the reach, efficiency, and affordability of public transportation services. There's a longer definition. I won't go over that right now, but that's available on our website. 
So how do we provide TA or technical assistance in a mobility management context? Um, Andrew went through several of the options that NCAT offers, and we have some similar ones. Um, we certainly like to put at the top of our list, working with you one-on-one -on -one to solve problems, facilitate conversations, whatever it is you need. I think that's gonna be a recurring theme between Andrew and myself. We are here for you. We are federally funded to be here for you to provide federally funded assistance so that you can maybe um, kind of expand out your knowledge or expand your opportunities um, without having to go the consultant route. A second and really important piece of our work is leading and helping to fund communities work to create more transportation opportunities for residents and more on that in a moment. Um, we certainly have a gamut of in-person remote trainings and then like any good TA center, we like to share resources and news, examples of what's working in other communities. So working working one-on-one -on -one with communities, um, this is a list of our staff. Again, you can see that we go across um, Easter Seals and APTA and CTIA. Um, and note that on the bottom, NCMM also has a technologist, Kevin Chambers, some of you may know him from Full Path. And he, we fund him to, again, be your source uh, for help to assist communities working with technology issues. So you have both NCATs, all of their valuable help, but also um, you can talk with Kevin as well. Um, so I wanted to identify one of these um, current opportunities that we have coming up. Um, it's on addressing social isolation. Uh, so NCMM will facilitate groundbreaking collaborations among state level agencies working within a single state or a tribal nation who are interested in working together to address how transportation can help reduce social isolation among older adults and thus improve their health outcomes. Uh, we know that there is a strong link between being socially isolated and experiencing depression and loneliness and how that can impact your health. So what we're looking for is a state or tribal DOT a state or tribal, maybe it's an office on aging, maybe it's a Department of Health and Human Services or public health, whatever those agencies are, we want you to find your state level partners Then come to us and we will, with you, we will design what this can look like and we will help facilitate that. Um, we've had some collaborations with CDC on this already and also the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials um, and we hope to pull in one of our other T centers and ADTC. Again, federally funded, cost to you is zero. The deadline, if you want to, if you're with a state or at that level, or if you want to make sure your state level contacts know about this opportunity, there's the um, URL. Um, and again, our short URL is nc4mm.org and just slash social isolation. Hey, Amy, real yeah. quick, um, it looks like your camera is blocked. Oh, it is indeed. Thank you, Taylor. I was, I was trying to be ghost myself. That's <laughs> back from Andrew. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Okay. So the second big piece that I mentioned up front is leading and helping to fund communities work, create more transportation opportunities. These are our grants. Um, we have been implementing human center design grants since 2012. Andrew has certainly worked on a number of those. All of our grants are cross-sector. Um, most of these um, agencies have never worked before. Um, but let's say, for example, you want to work on older adult issues, going back to that theme, um, your team would be pulled from the, a, transit, um, a transportation agency, but also include people who are working on older adult issues. Our teams are formed, as I said, based on the content of the project. We don't... Um, require except for the fact that they be cross-sector and all teams have to include at least one or two end users. Here's a, just a couple of samples of projects. Um, these three samples have either are, have either completed their pilot or else they are in the middle of their pilot work. So in King County, Washington, uh, HopeLink worked on a project out there getting patients to post discharge appointments and in that they worked very closely with the hospital staff and their discharge planners. In Colorado Springs and Vita worked on how they could support behavioral health patients by scheduling transportation the same time as they schedule their app so it's one less thing they have to stress about. And then in Trenton, New Jersey, this is one of our pilot grants that is um, just kicked off I think last week. 
Um, their problem, problem that they were trying to solve is how do we get low income workers um, who are living in the Trenton area out to their jobs and fulfillment centers like for Amazon and Wayfair and um, many, many others, which are located, I believe it's about 10, 15 miles away. And there was no direct transit uh, connection. So what they are piloting and the first in the country to do this is a Waze, the app Waze, um, a carpooling system based within that app for low wage workers. Three other quick projects. Now these are still in the planning phase in Botetourt County, Virginia. Uh, an area is very rural, wanted to help older adults get to healthcare. So the, their solution in the works is to create a weekly shuttle for those individuals um, to go from a central place within their community and to go to some of those larger cities, like in this case, it would be Roanoke, Virginia for those medical appointments. The idea would be that we would be coordinating with their medical providers so that they would know that this shuttle is going coming in, say, on a Wednesday, so that they could schedule their appointments all on a Wednesday and they could all travel in together. In North Charleston, South Carolina, um, they are working on access to food. So ensuring that this one low income neighborhood, which is kind of dissected by a four lane highway to make sure that, and the grocery stores are kind of out of reach. They're certainly not walkable for these residents. So how, so they end up going to what are called the bodegas or, you know, the 7-Elevens, what have you, buying frozen food, prepackaged food, um, and have very limited access to healthy and fresh food. So that's the challenge that they are working on. Uh, we are not quite sure what their solution is going to look like right now. Um, possibly it will be a micro transit solution for a grocery shuttle. Um, and it might also invent with our involve what they're calling chili bins, which would be coolers that, they, that would be on the buses to keep their frozen food cold while they ride home. In Ware County, Virginia, uh, right south, I believe it is, or north of the Okefenokee Swamp, I love saying that word, um, they are trying to ensure that workers, low-income workers again, or people who have just become disillusioned um, by just the difficulties keeping a job and getting there every day, uh, using community vehicles for trips for low-income workers. So this, they've already gotten a commitment from the local YMCA and I believe another faith-based organization where they have vans that sit um, empty and unused during the week. And how can they fold all of those into a single network to help people get to work? So these are just the samples of our projects. We just completed our um, call for projects for the next round of planning grants, um, but upcoming, um, we will have an opportunity for our pilot grants. So we have grants in three phases. Our first grant is those planning grants if we just completed the call for projects. There's a middle phase, which is what we call our learning launch phase, or you might call it a proof of concept phase, where they take what they came up with in the planning and then they play it all out on paper. Where is it going to work? Where are our weak points? Where do we have to change things? And after that, they are eligible to go into our open competition for our ready to launch grants, which are up to $75,000 for implementing a new transportation solution that was developed using the human center design process. And again, I'd emphasize these are pilot grants, not funding for existing services. Um, but even those who have not gone through our human services design process can apply for these as long as they can show us that they have uh, developed those solutions with the key pieces of a human centered design process. And the release date for that will be next month. So stay tuned for that. So the third way that we help again are in-person and remote trainings. We um, certainly do trainings in person. We've done a number and Andrew's helped with these on human centered design and how important that is. Um, we are about to launch our, in fact, we have applications open right now for what we're calling our level one MOS or mobility as a service training. Um, this was formerly our one call, one click training. But when we looked at the um, fact that our a one call, one click system is almost identical to what's being described in level one MOS. And if you're not that familiar, MOS has been broken down into five different levels. And that very first level is just pulling all the information about transportation systems across modes into one place so that individuals can access that information with one touch. So that training, if you look on our website again, nc4mm.org, you will see that that's where our call for anybody who's interested in this free training. Um, we will be choosing three to four communities for that. 
And those communities can have a team of three to four, again, people per team to attend that training. We will also be putting out a call for communities who are interested in what we call our issue focused community workshops. So this is really focusing on an issue that your community is struggling with and involves transportation. Um, these workshops have been again, multi-sector and we bring everybody into a room, um, didn't do that last year, but we bring everybody into a room and we really kind of using some of that human centered design um, strategies, we really drill down into like, all right, how can we um, move the needle on solving this challenge? We have a full complement of e-learning courses. Our latest one that we put up, I believe was last year is on cost allocation. Um, we have another one that was developed for us um, on partnering. Uh, I believe it's an eight module course on what are all the stumbling blocks to partnering, especially cross-sector partners. We have another course on conducting effective meetings and several other courses. Uh, those are just a couple of the latest ones we've pulled forward. And we're always available to create a customized training on mobility management topics that you request. So that's just a sense of our training. Um, and again, this was just a description of that level one MOSH training, which is our current opportunity. There you can see the URL at the bottom, which again is nc4mm.org slash level underscore one underscore MOSS underscore training underscore 2021. So if you're interested in that, um, please take a look at that page. We uh, would like to um, include you in our training cohort. Um, and then again, I mentioned this upcoming opportunity for the issue-focused mobility meetings. Um, that information will be coming out. And again, all of these opportunities are free for communities. Um, last, we like to push out our resources and we do that via our website. Um, the full title, in case you forget the short title is National Center for Mobility Management.org, but our cheek title is nc4mm.org. This also is a screenshot of our front page. Um, you can see that at a glance, you can see at the top of our website um, important announcements. And then I just scroll down a small bit and you can see our latest blog entries and our latest news. Um, so we do definitely see our website as the gateway to our resources. Um, you saw that we cover, we have both blogs, we have resources, we have uh, news items. And what we've decided is that we wanted to put everything out so that you can search it. So you don't have to remember when was that webinar or when did that resource come out or what newsletter issue was that in? You could just simply put in the topic in our search feature, which is powered by Google. And you can find, um, not perfect, but pretty decent. Um, you can find all of the hits that related to the topic that you want. Our, our byword is so that we have resources on tap. So when you want them. We also have created our knowledge center and have two resource centers currently underneath those. One is our health and transportation resource center, which addresses um, transportation and social determinants of health or SDOH. Uh, so we know that transportation is not an end in itself. It's always a means to um, a different end, a different destination. And so we want to make sure that we capture all of that information. The Knowledge Center is pretty comprehensive. It looks at transportation from both from healthcare, from um, social determinants of health, just general, and then from public health perspectives. And we have um, pretty current resources in there. So feel free to take a look at that. Our other resource center in the Knowledge Center is that one call, one click center, which we will be rebranding as a level one MOS. But um, again, there's a wealth of information. I believe we have profiles of close to 21 different one call, one click uh, sites that are up, um, operated by transit agencies. So take a look at that. Um, I mentioned our blog. Um, we are in the process of um, of scaling that up. Um, currently, we probably have a blog once or twice a week. Um, we're trying to get to two or three times a week. And again, what we decided was any newsworthy type articles we were going to put in our blog, so then it would be fully searchable. Um, our calendar events, I hope you've taken a look at that, um, similar probably to what Andrew was describing for, the, for NCAT. We pull events from all sorts of sources. 
from TRB, from NTI, from um, all a lot of the um, nonprofit kind of centers that work on transportation so that you can see it all in one place. And just an aside, I love this picture. Um, Andrew and I were sitting at our desk over the winter. I don't remember how long ago it was, Andrew. Um, but this this is a real car. It went by and it had these two beautiful passengers in it. So I just think that's a fun picture to share. And I think that's it for me. Um, I do want to just kind of now kind of look at this from CTA's perspective, um, how you as, as members benefit from our technical assistance work. Um, you can apply, um, for example, for any of our opportunities, the strike teams, for example, the state summits from NCAT, um, NCMM's grants, you know, obviously participate in our webinars, our training, et cetera. Um, but know that it's important and this is very important, that you already inform our work by sharing your projects. We have learned so much from our CTA members over the years, and we are able to incorporate that information into our work in these centers. In addition, um, what we learn in our work, we then build into our response as CTAA staff to our responses to your questions. So there's a really a good back and forth channel between everything that we do and learn at our um, through our TA centers and everything that can help and benefit you in the services that you provide. And then clearly, I hope that message has come through. Um, you can access our resources at any time. Um, we also promote them through CTAA's e-newsletters that Taylor puts together, and we are always, always at the end of the phone or the email, so we are here for you. Um, and I think, Taylor, that's all I have. Great. Thank you so much. Like Andrew, I was struggling with the mute. <laughs> um, one question I had, Amy, did you want to talk a little bit about what NCMM is doing at Expo in November? Uh, of course, be happy to. So at Expo, um, we are still finalizing our um, workshop topics, um, but I will be doing a one day course on Monday um, on human centered design and innovation. So you're more than welcome to join us for that. And then on Tuesday, NCMM will be hosting a mobility management forum. So this is an annual event. I think we've been doing about four or five years now. Um, we will be having our, our a morning session, which will be focusing, we will have a speaker, we're looking to secure a speaker on equity in transportation. We're also going to secure a speaker on uh, MOS, again, mobility as a service in transportation. Um, and then we will also have um, two panels. Um, one will be our mobility management um, network from Virginia, because uh, we'll be in Richmond, as Virginia is our, home, our host state. And, we, and our final panel will be hearing directly from some of those grantees. A couple of them I mentioned briefly here, but it would be a chance for you to kind of like, well, how did you really do that? And how did you get them on board? Like, how did you even approach Amazon and get them to listen to you and I'll pick up the phone? So um, those are two of the big events that we'll be hosting. Um, the second half of that Tuesday, so the first half would be that session. The second half of that will be um, an unconference. So if you have not been to an unconference before, um, this was particularly requested by our mobility managers. This is where you can bring your topic to the whatever topic you want addressed or whatever topic you want to discuss or share on. And all of the content for that second for the afternoon of that second day will be dictated by the attendees. So um, I've been to several of those on conferences and I always get an awful lot of them. Awesome. Thank you. Um, the other question that we received was about veterans and potential transit uh, veteran transportation programs. So I think that's more of an Amy question than an Andrew question about uh, programs that are out there. Um, so as everybody probably recognizes, um, there was a flurry activity around veterans programs back in 2010, 2011, when the VTCLI grants were out. Um, Unfortunately, we haven't done a lot of focus on that lately. Um, it's a really good question. Um, if you um, come up with some ideas for us, we'd love to pursue them. I mean, it's certainly very important and we developed some really good relationships with veteran services networks. Um, but up to at this point now, we just, um, we take our direction from our federal um, project officers and that just hasn't been one that they've asked us to pursue. Um, but it is clearly included in a cross-sector partnership. Um, and I would think even with Andrew, some of the technology um, would certainly uh, apply. And Andrew, I don't know if you want to say something on that. 
I was just thinking of how I think a lot of mobility as a service st- or one call one click stuff came out of VTCLI. And so that was in a way the like origin of this, that realm of um, transit technology. And so, um, you know, focusing on these specific issues can then dovetail into what tech solutions help with these. And so one thing that we um, have been working on Uh, you know, NCAT and NCMM is how we can make sure we um, coordinate on different projects and uh, really bolster each other's work. And so I think, you know, anything like that would be right in line with what we would want to accomplish. So that way we can identify the tech needs for any kind of whatever other efforts um, come about. And I'd love to see a community start to apply microtransit. Um, we see con- microtransit coming in so many communities now, and I'd love to see that kind of be applied to how can you help veterans get to um, uh, CBOX or to um, veterans medical centers. Uh, I would love to see some projects on that. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Stephen that asked that question. Was that right? Mm-hmm. Um, Stephen, be sure and look for our planning grants that come about every year. Um, and if you have a veterans project you want to suggest, we would love to um, take a look at that. Awesome, thank you. So this next question is for Andrew. Are grants available to assist in creating API keys for rural 5311 recipients handling NEMT trips? Um, Curtis goes on to say, Nebraska DOT has a statewide technology project, but several of the approved software vendors do not currently have APIs in place with some of the transportation brokers. Hmm. So our current, currently we don't do, we don't have direct funding for uh, specific efforts. Um, instead, uh, our funding goes more towards kind of our, the, like the strike team time. And so it would be more to, um, so it wouldn't be to just kind of pay someone to create an API key, um, unless, you know, through the strike team effort and you, unfortunately the strike teams are, uh, already underway for this year, but that could theoretically be um, something to apply for in the next year. Or um, while we wouldn't have direct funding for that um, currently, um, you can reach out to me and we can kind of figure out what we can figure out for that. Um, So feel free to reach out and I'm going to try to add my email address to your question. Um, and I'm wondering, um, so Taylor, I don't know, are there other questions that I'd like to ask Curtis? I don't know if you can unmute him. I'd like to hear a little bit more about his question. Yes, let me find him. Curtis, you should be able to talk if you want to go ahead and unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you say a bit more about your question? Well, um, Nebraska is trying to get all of our rural transit agencies to uh, Sign to get software in place, um, you know, dispatching software, scheduling software. And they've approved a um, specific number of vendors that met their criteria. And I, we run a deviated fixed route as well as a demand response service. So I, I'm limited on which of those softwares I can use. I currently use route match and, and then we have three different transportation brokers and getting them to get on board with the API keys to help us out. Uh, we do quite a few NEMT trips and, you know, as with any Medicaid, Medicare type system, it can be a little cumbersome to process the, the billing and keep the credentialing and all that up to date. So you're saying that API would help filter the trips that are assigned to you by the broker and, and, and fold it into your scheduling system? It'll, it'll pull the trips into our system and then it'll push the billing information, mm-hmm. you know, pick up times, drop off times, et cetera, back to their system um, for, for payment. Okay. And so you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, there's, there's the, right now there's kind of like that divide. Just, those two just don't talk. Right. Some of the software companies do, but that most of those are for just the, uh, some of the agencies that just strictly do um, demand response service. Um, but we have that kind of a hybrid system. We're the first one in Nebraska to do this in a rural community. Um, so of the software is approved, there's really only one that will work for us. And that's route match. It allows us to dispatch both 
um, services from the same platform. But it doesn't incorporate the NEMT assigned trips. Right, we have to manually pull those off of yeah. each portal, manually build them into our system. Same thing with the billing, and we have to manually yeah. uh, put it into a spreadsheet, upload it, and send it send it through their portal. I know um, I saw um, Elaine Hitko on the phone. Um, Elaine, I don't know if you want to. So Elaine runs the Vermont Public Transit Association, and they um, are the only transit association in the United States that um, holds the NEMT contract, the statewide NEMT contract. Um, so Elaine, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this at all. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but. That's OK. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, you're a little bit faint, but we can hear you. OK, so I, I'm just curious. So he gets um, trips in Nebraska from a broker, and then he has to pull them, because we also use route match here. So that sounds like a little bit different. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, there's three different healthcare providers for Medicaid and Medicare in Nebraska, and each one uses a different broker that schedules the trips for the for the pa patients. So there's we do deal with three different portals, three different complete systems for uploading and downloading trips, and different each one requires different information for billing. Ironically, that. HHS in Nebraska didn't standardize anything, unfortunately, but um, that's, like I said, we have to pull it across from three different vendors. It just can be time consuming to have to manually enter all that data and oh, increases okay. the chance of errors. Oh, of course, times. ouch, that sounds really, really painful. Um, uh, we're very fortunate we're, we're just one. And so we're all doing that consistently um, with, with one service. Have you talked to RouteMatch? Can't they customize something for you? We're negotiating right now with the five-year contract extension, and okay. I'm just getting a little pushback from them, but um, hopefully with, between the state mobility management team and NDOT, uh, maybe we can put a little pressure on them to uh, uh, put the effort into it. I, I don't think that, because we have a, several larger transit agencies in Nebraska that all use route match. Okay. My thought um, here, I'm sorry, Len, go ahead. Amy, you should share my contact information with this kind gentleman. I, I'd love to chat with him offline. Okay. All right. Well, happy to do that. And thank you, Elaine, for jumping in there with no notice. Um, Curtis, the only other thing I can think of is my understanding of an API, and if people aren't familiar with that term, an API is that bridging software that allows two different systems to talk to each other. So um, it would be great if we could have, you know, an API that would allow you just to download those NEMT trips and upload your billing and what have you. Um, apart from trying to get route match or whoever, whatever scheduling software you have um, on board, the other really hard part would be um, getting the brokers um, to open up. And that's another whole ball game. So, um, so yeah, um, good luck with that. As Elaine says, it does sound painful. It sounds like an awful lot of extra work you have to do. I, I know that each broker, though, has its own proprietary software, and and yeah, that, that, that that's a it's a big lift. So um, let us know if there's anything in terms of negotiations or whatever that we can help you with. Okay, thank you for the help. Yep. Okay, and I guess the only other thing I might say is that our technologist Kevin Chambers, who I mentioned, he has written many. He is a coder um, by trade, so he has written written many APIs. Uh, so um, I reach out to him. Um, and again, I will put his, um, I believe his email is just technologist at nc4mm.org. Okay. Um, so email him. Um, he might have some other ideas for you. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks much. Of course. Do we have any other questions? comments um, about the TA centers, anything CTA is doing or any other kind of opportunities that are out there. We'll wait a minute, a couple of seconds to see if any other things come through. Well, in the meantime, um, just a reminder for those who are on the webinar, our next webinar will be September 1st. That is um, in conjunction with Uber Transit slash Route Match. And that will be a discussion on on-demand services. It'll be featuring uh, Dan Mulraney with Cape May Transit and how uh, he's been working with the software and how it's been working for his community. 
We also have Expo, as you all know, coming up in November. We'd love to see you all there. We are working on workshops as we speak and hope to release those next week um, to make sure we have all the content that you guys are looking for and want. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and say thank you so much, Andrew, Amy. I don't know if you have any last words, but uh, thank you all so much for being here and we look forward to seeing you soon.